All right, everybody, I'm Gerardo Ramos, and I'm here with Kevin Gleason, and we're here to talk about um, his gym and kind of his fighters. I've been around uh, the fight game already for about a year and a half, and coincidentally enough, I photographed four of your fighters. Um, and one of them happens to be a, cha a champion, uh, Ryan Cuse. Yeah. Can you tell me a little bit about yourself and a little bit about him? I've been coaching now for about six years. Um, I started at you know, a couple different gyms, bouncing around. Um, I went out on my own and I was coaching over at Fight Fit in Turn Pines, just renting space over there. I uh, had a good little group of guys. Ryan was one of them. You know, he was kind of in and out through different gyms. He stuck around you know, as guys come and go and stuff like that. Ryan was you know, always there. Um, and he just always kind of followed with wherever I went, you know, he kind of believed in the system and the culture that I was presenting. So, um, that's how I met Ryan. Um, and I know he's over at the, the goat shed as well. So he's, you know, he bounces from my gym to their gym. That's outstanding. He, and he's the XFN champ at this time, right? Yeah. He's the XFN champ right now. Currently, uh, the, the defending champion. Yeah. And what about Chris, uh, Boasso? Um, I photographed him. Um, about once or twice already. He's pretty intense as well. Chris is, Chris is awesome, man. He's an awesome guy. I met him same way. Um, once I started building up a little culture over at Fight Fit, a lot of these guys kind of, you know, started falling through. I'm a boxing coach, so, you know, they all come from an MMA background. They want to work on their stand-up. Um, I heard about him through a buddy of mine, Santana, that I was training. He messaged me a couple times through Instagram. Um, we set up a couple sessions and from there again, you know, he, he just kind of fall into this place over here. Um, this, this gym was kind of built for all these fighters. You know, I, I built up a gym where, you know, we can really go at it and can create a big culture. Um, and just, you know, have those really, really hard, tough sessions. Um, Chris is one of those guys who's always been, you know, when it comes to fighting, he's always an intense individual. And that's awesome. You know, I saw one of your posts the other day and you, uh, something that there's a difference between a striking coach and a boxing coach, right? So what makes it, what's different about that? Uh, I just think, you know, striking coaches is an MMA thing, you know, um, they're teaching all different kinds of concepts, you know, with, with kicking, punching, elbowing, those kind of things. Where I met with it was I, I'm, a, I'm a strict boxing coach. I came from boxing gyms, you know, since I was a young kid, I bounced around from different gyms, getting, you know, learning the culture of boxing. So I see a lot of coaches that say I'm a boxing coach, but they never really came from the, the boxing culture. Um, and that's kind of what I meant by that one. They, they came up in MMA gyms and it's just a little bit different, you know, when you're training a system of boxing as opposed to MMA striking. Right, right. So you, you grew up in boxing then. Did you box yourself? Yeah, I boxed. Uh, I, I started boxing around like 14 at uh, Parent Pines uh, Police Athletic League. And, you know, from there I started bouncing around different gyms. Um, I always enjoyed the culture, the, you know, the, it's an individual sport, but having the, the team and the guys around you, the camaraderie. Um, so I, I bounced around from gyms, you know, on and off my whole life, you know, trading in for other sports. Um, but I've been around all kinds of gyms in South Florida. You know, I try to travel around as much as I can to get, you know, more education. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. You know, I actually just um, photographed a, a pal. Hollywood pal? Yeah, Hollywood yeah, pal, that's yeah, the one. That. Yeah, yeah, that was pretty cool. Yeah. I think it's, it's great, like, seeing up, uh, these kids um, coming up and, like, as amateurs, you know, you have to start somewhere. This is pretty cool to experience and seeing these kids growing up, you know, and yeah, the, the police athletic league is great because it offers an outlet for some of these young kids that can't afford big gyms, big coaches, you know, they, they start off there and it's, it's a chance for them to get some eyes on them and, and take boxing. If they take it serious to get them to the next level, you know, it's, it's almost like a kickstart kind of thing for them, you know, right, so right. I kind of, you know, that's where I actually started coaching boxing. I went back to the police athletic league where I coached, you know, uh, young kids like Christian Noni's and, and a couple other ones. Oh, okay. So let's transition to Blake Davis. He's uh, the boxer. The other two were MMA fighters. So tell me a little bit about him and his come up. I met Blake uh, when he was, I believe, 18 at a different gym um, that I was, I would go to for sparring. And then I met him. Um, he was doing some of like the fitness classes, nothing crazy at the time. He hadn't fought yet, hadn't had an amateur fight, um, but he was an eager guy. He wanted to learn how to box. Um, from there, we just, we always, me and Blake always had a different relationship. I always say with Blake, it was bigger than boxing. You know, he's almost like a younger brother of mine. So, um, from there, I met him at that gym. I trained him over there. Um, I trained him, you know, at multiple other gyms after we left that gym. We came, 
to fight fit. I trained over at fight fit. He came over here with uh, myself and, and his head trainer, uh, Jeff. I, so all these guys are following you around, so you must be doing something, right? And sure. in addition to that, I think it's a family. It's a, it's a culture that you've... I always, something that was important to me is I always wanted, whether it was my fighters or my fitness clients, I always wanted people to associate with the culture I was building. You know, it's, mm-hmm. it's that saying, you know, your vibe attracts your tribe. Um, I was lucky enough, I always been circ- like I've always had a great circle of people around me, you know, whether it's fighters or fitness clients. Um, so that was always something that was really important to me. I've been in other gyms and uh, I, I just didn't see the culture that I was really looking to build. And I always say that uh, a lot of these trainers out here, they're chasing each other, you know, locally where I'm kind of trying to chase the guys that are out in New York, you know, LA, Vegas, you know, so my, my picture is a little bit bigger and broader, you know, where these guys are kind of just chasing each other and trying to outdo each other locally. Right. You know, and I feel like if you want to be the best at whatever it is that you do, you have to really chase the best guys out there. Absolutely. And I think you're, you have the ability to do so. You're an intelligent guy and you have like all, all these guys, you know, they're all really, really intense when I get, when they get in the cage, um, something that I've, I've talked to some friends in the past about is that you can't really train intensity. You can't train someone who's been in the corner. You have to be in that position. And, and all these guys, they're, re- they're really hard fighters. So congratulations to what you're doing thank here, man. You, you. Um, I do want to present with you, uh, to you a little gift. Um, like I said, I photographed um, a few of your guys. Oh, man, that's dope. So that's for you. That's on fine art paper, so it's going to last you forever. You know? Um, war right there. That was it sure was. Uh, First pro fight, yeah. That was his first four, uh, yeah, at con- a nasty cut on the forehead. Yep, yep. Yeah, I remember that. It was like standing in a puddle of blood. It was. It, it was a really intense cut. It took a while to heal too, huh? Yeah, it did. It did. It took a long time to heal up. But yeah, that was a, that was probably the craziest cut I've ever seen. I think that was almost down to his bone. Were you working cut? Uh, me and a, another guy were, yeah. I mean, we were kind of just trading off. It was such like a, a crazy corner. Uh-huh. Um, just because of the, you know, how chaotic it was with that cut, it was so intense, man. That was the worst cut I think I've ever seen in my life. So, as far as um, injuries are concerned, what, what do you find are, could be worse, like in boxing or in MMA? MMA for sure. Yeah. I mean, you get you get caught with these elbows or you know kicks to the head. You know you get split wide open. Um, I just recently started cornering uh, bare knuckle boxing with Jim Allers. Those are probably the worst cuts I've ever seen. Yeah. And those guys, they get, they get hit with a jab. I mean, it's a bare knuckle, so they're getting sliced wide open. That's probably worse than boxing or MMA, but it happens so fast, you know. Um, like I said, a jab or anything can cut you wide open. You know? Right, you right. You get banged up. You know, I always say if you're going into that second round of a bare knuckle fight, you know, you're going to be rearranged pretty bad. Yeah, no, for sure, for sure. That makes sense. So uh, with the guys that you have, that you're training right now. Do you have any up- upcoming fights other than Jim Allers? Sure, I have um, two guys fighting on Saturday at the Combat Nights. Um, I have Lou Duran, he's boxing, and Julian Rodriguez, he's boxing. Miguel Baez is fighting at um, the UFC in Tampa and next weekend, not this weekend, next Saturday. And that's his debut, right? That's his, uh, yeah, he fought on the contenders, he won, he got a contract, and he's fighting um, next Saturday in Tampa. That's his UFC debut. Yeah. Well, congratulations for that. That's, that's huge to you and, and, and for him and his family, I'm sure. I've been for a long time, so. Yeah? Yeah, he's probably my longest standing fighter. Okay, you know, cool. About like five, six years. Well, I hope to photograph him one day too. Definitely. Okay. Well, is there anything else that you want to say to maybe anybody watching this video, that um, programs that you provide here or where you're located? We're just, you know, we're a boxing program. It's, it's you know, a small little system. I want to create that, again, that culture where it wasn't this big, big gym. It, it's a small system. You're gonna get, you know, kind of one-on-one attention. I don't do classes any, no more than 12 people at a class. Um, I do a lot of one-on-one work and, and stuff like that. Um, that's That was always my main function to create a family environment here and a, and a great culture within everybody, whether you're the fighters or your fitness client, you know, and that's something that I've always gotten back to everybody's real close with each other and that was something that was really important to me so i mean that's a system that i've created and that i you know i refuse to to transfer over to a big gym okay okay and you do fitness classes as well uh, i do fitness training one fitness one. training yeah, i'll do fitness boxing i mean i always teach you know the art of boxing the craft of it 
Um, but you know, I incorporate a little bit of fitness in it as well. You know, mm-hmm. people get a good workout and they love boxing, you know. And how can people contact you? You can find me on uh, Instagram, Kevin underscore Gleason seven. Um, I have a website, kevingleason.co. All right. Sounds good. Well, appreciate the time um, to, to conduct this interview and I certainly wish you the best, brother. Appreciate it, man. Thank you. Cool, man. Yep. Appreciate the gift. Yeah, absolutely.